It's this thing on. Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. I very welcome my friends and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Hello and welcome back to Big Mouth and you are very welcome. And you can keep this or any other conversation I ignite going over on my Twitter at Movies TV Mad, my Vero at Big Mouth One, and the extension to this channel, my Instagram, Big Mouth Double One Two Eight Nine. I actually remembered that today. So on today's show, we talk about the pre-box office opening day sales of Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. And nine years on after Henry Cavill was announced as Superman, we talk about Henry Superman. We talk about Hen Henry and Superman as a whole. We celebrate him and we say how much we love him because R.T. Snyder Cut, I think he's R.T. Snyder Cut, have actually done this little thing where you can make a video about Henry Superman and link it in to release the Snyder Cut. I did one on my Instagram, Big Mouth Double One Two Eight Nine. Check it out if you want an example. Really, really, really brilliant. But before I start this show, I think Chris Wong Svensson did a couple of those posters for the poster competition. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Where are we? Where's Twitter? Where's Twitter? Right, here's Twitter. I think he did a couple the other day, and I'm not sure if these were his. I think these were Chris's. I'm not sure, though. I am not sure. But they're pretty stunning, right? Pretty st Whoever they are, I think they're Chris's, but I could be wrong. Chris, I know you've watched my videos before. If, if these are yours, just let me know. But whoever did these, these are pretty, pretty Awesome. Sorry, I don't have the editing software to get captions so we can take a closer look at this. But this is Big Mouth. This is the DCEU Daily. And by the way, welcome to Friday's edition of the DCEU Daily. For you, those of you hoping that Birds of Prey is going to be a flop, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Now, I've just saw on Twitter some interesting opening pre-sales higher than Suicide Squad. I think just below Aquaman, just below the Joker as well. So it looks like my projections of maybe just under 800 million are probably bang on, or maybe just a bit more, but who knows how well this film is going to do. But as I keep on saying, the Suicide Squad movie did well because the Joker and Harley Quinn were going to be in it. This film's going to do really well because no matter the quality, and it's a great quality film, by the way, before anyone starts, um, Harley Quinn, Margot Robbie is Harley Quinn, is liquid gold. That's always going to work. People want to see her as Harley. They're very excited. Now, we all said with the R-rated nature of Joker that maybe it wouldn't do as well as, let's say, Aquaman or the, the MCU films. <laughs> we were wrong, both critically acclaimed and the box office smash. And boring as I sound, Walter Hamada's record carries on, doesn't it? It's an amazing record. It, look, there's a big difference when you've got a producer, when you've got an exec running a whole franchise and putting the things in place. Before, before um, Walter, we had a slate of films that never were made. Under Walter Hamada, we've got a slate of films that absolutely have been made, will be made, and are in production now. That's the big difference. So, Birds of Prey and the Emancipation of One Harley Quinn great reactions, a great opening day of pre-sales, and I expect that to get better and better. It's just great for people talking positively about DC, and as I said the other day, I just want to kiss every DC fan when things are going right for us, because it's so important for me. It, my support and my love for DC, the comics, the animation, the t um, some of the TV, even the rubbish TV, I appreciate it because it's representing the DC characters that I love. And these movies, the DCEU, the worlds of DC, these, this DC universe of movies. I just want to talk about quickly something that Free Buck Theatre tried to say, because DC Universe are giving away free tickets, I think, to Birds of Prey. And he reckons this is proof that DC Universe is in trouble. No. The problem with what DC Universe has, not everyone's a DC fan, right? And... The licensed situation where these companies are not willing to pay more money to go globally with their streaming services right off the bat hurts them. It's hurting Disney. This is why they've put forward when they release in Europe. 
um, Disney Plus. That's why it's coming out a bit earlier, earlier March rather than the end of March. And looking forward to see what they have to offer on there. But and here's the thing, and this is what's hurt DC Universe. It's only available in America. And there's a global situation there. Now, obviously, there will be a bigger market if they do join H HBO Max. And I don't know what's happening there. But if they, when HBO Max finally go international, that's when the big business starts. But they're not willing to pay the license fees to go international straight away. I don't think they think it's viable in a business sense. But whatever it is, um, that's what's hurting DC Universe. Anyway, nine years since Henry, I think this is it. I think that's what someone said on Twitter, so I could be all wrong, and I'm sure someone will get in the magnifying glass saying, oh, well, actually, you're wrong, Mick, but never mind. Let's just say nine years since Henry Cavill was announced as Superman, and what a beautiful, auspicious day. I'm going to be honest. I never heard of Henry. Never heard of him when he was announced. I saw a picture of him. In, I think it was on my friend's laptop at the time. I was around there for dinner. He had black hair. He had a purity around his face. You looked into his eyes and you believe he was a good person. He looked the part and I think, I thought, yes. And then people were saying what he'd done before and I thought, well, he seems like to be a pretty good actor and Henry Cavill is a brilliant actor. Forget what people say, he's a really good actor. End of story. He's a brilliant Superman. Um, what I love about his Superman is this gladiatorial thing that Snyder and Nolan and Goya brought into him. He's built like a ship brick house. He really looks like um, those pictures of Superman where, where he's really beefed up. And, you know, he looks like how Superman should look. I always felt, even though uh, Brandon Ralph is a very tall guy, he, he never seemed, he just didn't seem strong enough to be Superman. Um, he seemed a bit better in, in the Crisis on Infinite Earths, um, Christopher Reeve, uh, Brandon Ralph, Superman Returns Superman, but Henry really looks the part. I think he's an excellent Superman. I think the films he's in, BVS and Man of Steel, are a wonderful representation of a modern day Superman. I'm not going to say the thing, that's how Superman should be. Too many Superman films and too many fans of Snyder say that this is how Superman should be. No, that's your personal point of view and that's your personal perception. For me, Reeve was a great Superman for the 70s and 80s. And Cavill is a great Superman for the 21st century. And no doubt he'll be back to play Superman again. Very excited about that and very excited to see different versions of Superman in this DC cinematic universe now as well. We spoke about JSA Superman yesterday, but today we're talking about Henry. I think the qualities of Henry are quite simple. As I say, he actually looks like a strong man. Now, although Superman has powers, it's good to see the, the strength. And there's a strength of character with Henry Superman as well. There is a purity. There is a good guy there. People complain about Man of Steel because he doesn't seem to care about things exploding. This is a Superman in training. This is a guy who's been thrusted to suit. His father literally says to him, here's the costume. This symbol means hope. Now stop the threat that's coming. It's... It's just he has had no training. And even in I don't think he's even had any training in BBS or Justice League. And I, and I think ultimately when we do get a Superman film with him in it, we need him to go to the ship or the fortress or whatever and get some kind of education about Krypton. Um, so we can see that that's something I'd say he's been sadly lacking within the movies he's been in. Not, not a big criticism because this still is... I think so far it's been Superman Begins. I don't think, even though he's embraced who he is, knowing that at the end of Justice League he flies off and he's ready, ready to go, and we've been ready to see him go for, for a couple of years now since Justice League, I think there's a lot more for him to know about, you know, ab about um, Krypton. But as an actor, as Superman, I think he's wonderfully brilliant. I, I really do, and... Um, I think he demonstrates who Superman is. As I say, I love seeing him. Um, I think Zack chose a great Superman. I know he had another choice. I forgot the actor's name now. But, you know, the guy who played uh, was going to play Deathstroke in Ben Affleck's The Batman. And the one who did play Deathstroke in the Justice League um, post credit scene, by the way. And I thought, uh, great. I don't. When I heard he was definitely going to be Zack Superman, but scheduling with his show True Blood, stop that. I was kind of relieved because I look at him. He just doesn't seem, how can this guy be Superman? I don't, would, would Superman constantly have long hair and a bit? I don't, look, I don't know. 
Um, who am I to question the great Zack Snyder? But I just feel Henry Cavill is the better choice. He absolutely looks like Superman. He acts like Superman. I believe he is Superman. He's absolutely a brilliant Superman. But let's talk about the man, Henry Cavill. His representation publicly of Superman, his passion, his knowledge has been absolutely fantastic. He's a real geek. He plays games. He plays he plays computer games or whatever you, you kids call them today, right? Um, he probably plays Fortnite as well. Who knows? But he's a gamer. He's a geek. He's a nerd. I like the way he defends the fans right to be passionate and talk. I do think we get carried away. As fans, definitely. I think sometimes I get into it with people in comments or on other YouTube videos or Twitter and I say, bloody hell, Mick, what you said there was wrong, you know? And sometimes I think it's even with football the other night. Even if you don't know about UK football soccer, as you Americans call it, I support my team, Manchester United, and we have a player called Fred. And all the fans on Twitter were saying, oh, he's not playing well by the end. They were saying, oh, hasn't he developed well now? If you don't know where you are with fans in summer, because everyone thinks differently, because that's what's great about being in such a multi-dimensional um, society. Everyone's different. Everyone has different views. And social media allows people to represent those views. But what happens is, those opinions clash and cause aggression. And sometimes I think I wish we could all just take a step back and think about each other's feelings. But when you're in the heat of the moment, it doesn't happen. Sometimes I argue with someone and I think I'm right. And then I think about it and think, well, actually, Mick, that person had a point. Now, I don't go and apologise to them because you want to stand your ground. Unfortunately, that's what the way we are on social media. But, yeah, just a little thought for you there. But Henry Cavill... He's a brilliant guy. He really loves playing Superman. I love the interviews he's done since Justice League. He clearly has an opinion of BVS. He clearly prefers what happened in MOS to BVS. And he wants the arc and the threads that were laid out in MOS to be continued in a Man of Steel sequel. That's what he's been fighting for. I've told you guys and girls this a million times. Forget what Randolph said. Grace Randolph has been slaughtering Margot Robbie, saying that she wants to gain all the attention from her Birds of Prey um, co-leads. That's absolute nonsense. And the crap she's been saying, you know, saying the cast have no sex appeal and then trying to backtrack. Uh, listen, I've always tried to be kind of democratic with Grace. I respect the success that she's got. I think a lot of the stuff she does is great. The DC videos are great. But sometimes, Grace... In the name of getting yourself views and attention, you do things that are not right. That's what I would say about that. But anyway, right. Yeah, so she said a lot of things about Henry Cavill that are not right. Um, that he's a diva, that he's been trying to get more money. Listen, if he's trying to get more money, he should. He's brilliant. But that's not the point. He wanted a Man of Steel sequel. And there was a point in the past two, three years where Warner Brothers were trying to go a different way. I think Walter Hamada has found a democratic way of bringing other versions of Superman in, but keeping um, Henry Cavill's Superman in as well. And I think talks were ongoing with J.J. Abrams even before him and Bad Robot put pen to paper to join Warner Brothers. So Henry is a gentleman. You know, he's as much of a gentleman as Christopher Reeve was. And I remember Chris, and I remember his interviews. He really went out in public. He, this is why I talk about Tom Welling. I talk about most of the actors who played Superman. I don't think George Reeves publicly... Um, you know, represented Superman in a great way. Um, I think there's issues with Dean Kane as well, who's actually blocked me on Twitter. But when I talk about Brandon Routh and Tom Welling, who played Clark in Smallville, and Christopher Reeve, and Henry Cavill, they really understand that they are representing Superman in their everyday lives. And that's not easy. And they shouldn't have to do that, don't get me wrong. But they do. They do do that. They understand that they are holding the character at, you know, at that moment. And even now, Tom Welling's a gem. He really is. Um, he's funny and he does conventions and it's great. He's making himself some money, of course. Why should he do it for free? But so I think those guys who played Superman really understood and respected the fans and respect what Superman means. They probably don't understand what all the fuss is about, but they play the game. And I like that. I like that when they come out, they're happy to talk about Superman. There's something very, very special about that. So nine years on, I think we've gained a fantastic version of Superman. And I just can't wait to see Henry Cavill 
as the character again. So are we excited about Birds of Prey already bringing in the Bucks? What do we think of Walter Hamada's DC movie reign since Aquaman? And whatever people say, it is since Aquaman because he changed that movie. He changed that movie. It was going to be a very, very different movie. It was going to be a crossover movie. We all know that. Shazam, Joker, and now Birds of Prey. I've seen Birds of Prey, so I know. I know it's another great movie in the Hamada universe. That doesn't mean I have issues with Zack Snyder. I believe BBS and MOS were movies not for the masses, but really good, brilliant, brilliant CBM movies. And what I say to people when people say, oh, films should all be dark or they should all be light, no. The DCEU started with two very, very dark tales, right? Actually, Man is still a lot brighter than BVS. And now what they're trying to do is do other types of movies. It's called balance. It's called variety. And I'm absolutely fine with that. So please like, share and subscribe. Share the video. Share the channel. Comment down below. And I'll be back tomorrow with even more DCEU Daily.